Hello friends, welcome to Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts. Yet another video for my junior students. The topic of fractions. This is what I took up in my previous video and I have put up a video in which I reviewed all the concepts of fractions. Now this is the detailed video in which I'll be taking up multiplication of fractions and you know all these worksheets based on these concepts are already available on our learning loop app. So you can download the learning loop app from Google Play Store. This is the logo of the app and the link of uh, the Google Play Store uh, app is given here in the description box below. So you can buy nominal costing uh, uh, ebook of short tricks, very, very uh, renowned ebook where you find like uh, 350 short tricks of 24 different topics, various test series of uh, CBSC and the reasoning course and there are, you know, a lot of PDFs uh, useful for quantitative aptitude exams as well. You can watch some free videos also on the app. So download it now from the Google Play Store. If you find any difficulty, then you can send me a message on WhatsApp 9896369963. The material on uh, the Learning Loop app are validity based and therefore they are nominal costing. But if you want unlimited validity stuff, then you can send me the message on this number. 9896369963. Let's see some of the questions of multiplication of fractions. So we have a fraction here 17 upon 48 and we want to multiply that by 21. Now the first thing students have to understand is when you have a perfect whole number like 21 it means that it is 21 upon 1. So the 21 has to be considered in the numerator not in the denominator. Whenever you multiply fractions, the numerator will be multiplied by the numerator and denominator will be multiplied by the denominator. You will never cross multiply the numerators and the denominators. Also, you can cancel all the common factors between the numerators and the denominators either vertically that is one below the other or diagonally like this or like this. You can cancel out common factors. So here I can see that 21 is divisible by 3 and 48 is also divisible by 3. So if you cancel 21 by 3, you will get 7 as the quotient and cancel 48 by 3, you get 16 as the quotient. And now in the numerator, you have 17 and 7 and in the denominator, you have 16 and 1. There is no other common factor between numerator and denominator. So you can actually multiply the numerators and the denominators which will give you the final answer because there are no more common factors. So 17 into 7 is 119 and 16 into 1 is 16. This happens to be the correct answer. You can even convert that into a mixed number if the answer is given in that format. Similarly, when you see the operation off, you know, whenever you have off between a fraction and a whole number, then the, the operator off means we are actually finding the product. So the first question and the second question are nearly the same. It's just the difference between the symbol we are using for multiplication of fractions. Either it is the cross or off. So 3 fifth of 65 is 3 fifth, 3 fifth times 65 and you can write 65 as 65 upon 1. Now are there any common factors between numerator and denominator? Yes, there are the 5 in the denominator and the 65 in the numerator, they have a common factor or the highest common factor 5, which you can cancel. So 5 1 times is 5 and 5 13 times 6, 65. So you have 3 into 13 in the numerator and 1 into 1 in the denominator. You don't need to write 1 in the denominator. That's pretty uh, understood, right? Whenever a whole number doesn't have a denominator, that means the denominator is 1. So 3 times 13 happens to be 39 and since I am not writing 1 in the denominator, my answer for the question will be 39 itself. Let's see some more questions. So here we have a whole number 10 and we want to multiply that by a mixed number to 1 15th. So the trick is to convert the improper, uh, the improper version. I should get the improper version of the mixed number there. So 2 1 15th is 31 upon 15. I think you are well aware how to convert a mixed number into a improper fraction. 
So I converted that and now it's the same as the previous slide. You can write 10 upon 1 and then you can look for some common factors which you can cancel in the numerator and in the denominator. And when there are no more common factors, then I think it will be done. So I can see 10 and 15, they are divisible by 5. So 10 divided by 5 gives me 2 and 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. No more common factors there. So 2 times 31 upon 1 times 3 and the answer for the question will be 62 upon 3 or you can convert it into a mixed fraction that's 22 upon 3. Likewise, now let's move on to another type of question where you have a fraction 7 over 15 of of means you already know multiply and we have a mixed number 6 1 14. So how do you do that? 7 upon 15 times now I need to first convert this uh, uh, mixed number into an improper fraction. So 14 6 is 84 plus 185. So we have 85 upon 14 as the improper fraction version of the mixed number. So do you find any common factors there between numerators and denominators? Yes, I find multiple common factors. So between 7 and 14, we have a common factor 7 which we can eliminate. So 7 one time and 7 two times. Likewise, 15 and 85, they have a common factor 5. So 5 three times is 15 and 5 uh, 17 times is 85. Now, 1 times 17 in the numerator and 3 times 2 in the denominator gives me a 17 upon 6 as the answer or you can write it as 2, 5 upon 6. That's the mixed number version of your answer. That's how you multiply a fraction and a mixed number. Now, let's complicate the problem and get to a fraction 7 tenth, a mixed number 1, 3 over 14. So, I already told you, you cannot do direct multiplication of mixed numbers. You have to convert them into improper fractions first. 1, 3 upon 14 is 14 plus 3, 17. So, 17 upon 14. And the last one, 3, 2 third is 9 plus 2, 11. So, 11 third. So, now you have three different fractions which you have to multiply. Again, you can look for common factors. If you don't look for common factors, then you will get a huge number in the numerator and a huge number in the denominator for which finding common factors and cancelling them out will be a difficult task. So you have to cancel them before multiplying. Now that's one of the very important things you need to understand when you are doing multiplication of fractions. Let's look for common factors. So 7 1 times and 7 2 times. I told you we can cancel either vertically or diagonally, right? Then uh, are there any more common factors? 17 and 11, I don't think they uh, go into any number because they are primes. And in the denominator, I have 10 into 2 into 3. So no more common factors there. So 17 into 11 is 170 plus 17, which is 187. And in the denominator, you have 10 into 6, which is 60. So this is 3, 7 over 60, which happens to be the correct answer for this particular question. Friends, uh, the types of questions which are based on uh, multiplication of fractions can be huge. You know, you may be asked questions which are uh, directly based on the concept, but, but, but which uh, look a little bit different when you try solving them out. So we have a question here in which we have to fill the empty box here. So 2 sevenths times something that something can be a fraction, it can be uh, a positive integer, whatever, gives me 30 upon 245. So how do you solve this? This question is actually based on division. So what you have to do directly is to divide this by this, that is the numerator on the right hand side, 30, by the numerator on the left hand side, 2. That gives me 15. So 15 will be the numerator of my answer. And then the denominator by the denominator. So 245 by 7. How much is that? 7, 3 times is 21 and 7, 5 times is 35 and there we go 35 in the denominator but writing 15 upon 35 is not valid because 15 upon 35 has a common factor between them right so the numerator and denominator both are divisible by 5 so you can write 5 3 times is 15 and 5 7 times is 35 
thereby giving you three sevenths as the answer for this particular question. Friends, multiplication of fractions is not at all difficult. If you follow all these videos which I have been posting on the channel, your concepts will be very strong and you will form a very good base for all the quantitative aptitude exams. So do share this video with all your friends. Don't forget to download the learning loop app from the Play Store and look for the worksheets, the detailed worksheets based on this particular concept also. I'll pu I put the link in the description box below. Do subscribe the channel for more such amazing and useful videos. Don't forget to click the bell shaped icon. That's very important. Otherwise, you will be missing out on all the notifications for future uploads. Thanks for watching this video and all the best.